Welcome to the Computer Repair Podcast, episode number 272, What's in Your Van? I'm your host, Jeff Alish. This is our live show where we discuss the ins and outs of running your computer repair business. Computer Repair Podcast is brought to you by Reclaim Me Pro, the all-in-one highly configurable data recovery software. For a free 14-day trial, go to reclaimme-pro.com. Use the offer code PODNUTS for a 50% discount. And also buy FreshBooks, the simple pain-free invoicing solution for freelancers and small business owners. For a free 30-day trial, just go to freshbooks.com forward slash PODNUTS. Enter PODNUTS in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Let me introduce you to the co-host. We have Brad Torrey from TTCS Computer Services. Brad, welcome back, and how are you doing? Doing great, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome and ready to get this party started. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a little show and tell today, right? <laughs> a little show and tell, yes. We're going we're gonna to pull back the curtain and let everybody see what it is we really do or don't do to a certain extent. All right, let's go ahead and take care of some business. The IT Owner's Compass. Get help navigating your IT business. August 24th through the 26th. 2018 in Chicago, Illinois. Doesn't matter where you're at in the country. Chicago is a great hub and a great place to get to and a good time to hang out with your fellow techs. Learn, gather together, and learn some more. This event is presented by Lori Tisnot from Computer Concepts USA and Matt Rodella from TechSite Builder. We have an awesome keynote speaker, Mike Michalowicz, author of Profit First, The Pumpkin Plan, and The Toilet Paper Entrepreneur. And if you've not read any of those books, go out and get them either on Audible or Amazon now. They're excellent books. And if you've never heard Mike speak, number one, he does his own books, which is cool. But if you've never heard him speak live, then this will be the opportunity to see him live. And he is a hoot because I've seen some of his seminars and things he's done in the past. And I guarantee you, it will be fun. We also have your peers and industry experts that you will be able to collaborate with and learn. That's the best part, really. This is unlike any convention you've been to. We have everything in one spot, hotel venue, and a boat ride. Did I mention that some of your favorite podcasters will be there to meet in person? Mike Smith, Marvin B., Paco LeBron, John Dubinsky, and me. Get your ticket and reserve your hotel room at the venue now. Now, now, now. Now, we didn't have a meeting last week, and I can almost guarantee you that these tickets are going, and they are hot, and there's not that many left. So get your tickets now. Get your hotel room now. We would love to see you there. Go to itocompass.com. All right, Brad, let's, before we get started, let's go into our normal, share a tip or story that we could learn from. Oh, right. That part. I had a note for that. <laughs> I was chatting with JD in the, in, in the IRC here, and um, I had a thing for that. Hold on. Sorry. This is <laughs> great radio. Um, I really do have a thing for that. That's all right. I mean, oh, we, yeah, yeah. Not, sorry, no, that's right. Everybody's got nobody's uh like watching or anything. Uh, so Office 2016, we were doing a rollout of uh, three identical new computers replacing um, existing systems in an office, and so <clears throat> since they were all going to be set up the same, and they were all identical systems to begin with, uh, set up one, go through all of the steps, clone it three times or two times and now most of the work's done i can just change the system name and do a couple little tweaks right that's it's all good except that when i was doing it i wasn't thinking also hadn't run into this yet um i'd activated office on the first one and then cloned it three times and it was office 2016 and we did buy three keys three computers three keys we're staying above board we're all good um but i activated the first one and then just cloned it across the way and then um, then all three of them popped up and said that office activation was was failing. Um, so I'm like, oh, duh. All right. So I'll just go into, like I've always done before, if I ever had to, you go into add remove programs and there's the thing 
uh, that you can do a modify and then it says, do you want to just change the key? And you say yes, and you put in the new key and everybody's good to go. No, that's gone. Um, and most of the time with the newest version of Office, we're oftentimes buying it through the Microsoft Web Store and you're kind of just logging in with your Microsoft account. You're not really typing in keys, but this customer wanted to buy keys they insisted on running out to Best Buy and buying them on, like, literally getting in the car, driving to Best Buy. And I'm like, what are you doing? But that's what they wanted to do. And I was like, okay, fine. That's what you want to do. Um, and it's funny because once you use the key off the key card, Microsoft actually changes it in the back end. Um, it's not that key. But it activates fine, whatever. Anyway, so got to change the keys on these two systems so that each of them has the a unique key. And I had to look it up. And Microsoft offers two solutions. One is to uninstall, reinstall, which sucks because you have to, you, you have a key card, you don't have a disk, so you have to re-download the program to do that because it does that all kind of magically in the background. Or you can use this command, um, uh, command line. You have to launch an elevated um, command line and they give you a couple of things you got to hit. It gives you the last five digits of the key, and you got to do another command where you put those five in and tell it to release the thing, and then you launch Word again, and it and it asks for the key. So anyway, anyone out there working with uh, Office 2016 and you run into this kind of weird but very possible situation, it might save you a minute. And also, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck, Microsoft? Why are you making everything so hard? Well, with that, I guess I'll go into my story. So my there's a new game coming out called Sea of Thieves. Oh, and yes. I've heard my 19-year-old wants to play it, and my 11-year-old and my 13-year-old all want to play this game. So my 11-year-old, he usually gets on board right away. And, well, this is a game that is downloaded from the Microsoft Store. And so, I mean, we have an Xbox, everybody's got Microsoft accounts, all that kind of stuff. Now, my younger kids, I have set up on a parental account where I kind of, I take care of what they can or cannot do. And this was so confusing between the Xbox and Windows 10. They wanted me to somehow go in. Now, they gave me a link that went to Xbox.com, but did not take me to where I needed to go. I needed to go and find the privacy settings on my son's account, of which I had control over. So I had to log into my account, go to my son's account, get to the privacy settings, and then find the area where he was allowed to play multiplayer games. Now, in the past, if he's wanted to play, to ge play a game that's a little above his age, he'll come to me. I go in. I log in with my password. Boom. You're good to go. And I'd say... You can play it this time, or you can play it as for as long as you want. And most of the time, if I'm allowing them to play the game, obviously I'm just going to click on it and say, yes, they're allowed to play this game. So why is it there's such a convoluted system in such a way to dive down into these menus? And Microsoft gives you a link of what to do that goes nowhere near where you need to be. Come on. Microsoft, I you know, I am a Windows fanboy. I actually love Windows. But stuff like that, I'm up at 12.45 in the morning, just livid. I mean, I'm pounding on the keyboard so hard that I'm pushing the buttons that it sounds like a, a mechanical keyboard when there's little rubber pieces on it and it wasn't mechanical. So <laughs> just make it stupid simple, please. Especially for stuff like this where you want to go in, your kid wants to do something, you just want to go, yeah, let me go check a box. Yes, you can do that. No problem. I understand they're trying to keep my children safe, and that's why I set them up under those certain accounts. But I multiplayer games, I would have never had any idea. There's a lot of things you can shut off that you don't have to, you don't have to turn on the, the audible chat in any of those games. All that stuff's off. But just to play the game, come on. Yeah. So the the first <clears throat> we got an Xbox, you know, when it 360 when it was a newer thing back in the day, and my kids all had their their account, their login account set up as me being the parent, and they they'd done. I mean, they've been doing this for a while, and it took us like all day to get it to the point where we could just start playing games. 
and that was back then it doesn't sound like it's gotten a whole lot easier or no. better and, and then yeah they're protecting the youths of uh america and that's great but um yeah remember when you just took a nintendo and plugged it into the tv and started playing video games like it's a it's an appliance and now it takes literally a whole day to like get it up and running if you want to do it right so that's now, yeah, on the other side of that, though, here's the thing. So now Microsoft got rid of, or they're no longer supporting the Kinect for Xbox One. Now, the Kinect, as far as a unit for, I don't know, dancing in front of, is not all that great, in my opinion. It's gimmicky. It's it's whatever. It's kind of like the virtual reality stuff. I, Again, we're many, many years away before that's actually going to become even remotely good, in my opinion. Yeah, but my son decided he said, I want to connect because here's the problem. You have a stereo receiver, you have an Xbox, you have a TV and you've got 15 remote controls. <laughs> and so there's a couple of different things you can do. You could plug a microphone into the Xbox controller. If I want to watch TV or a Blu-ray, you know what a pain in the butt that is? Or I want to watch something on Prime or Netflix. So you've got to go through all these menus to try to get this up. You know what? But here is where, and I don't understand why they're not supporting this anymore. We got, I don't know how many are left out there. But the Connect for Xbox One is a phenomenal media player as far as, or a media controller for your media setup. And here's why. Number one, when I walk in the room, it says, hi, Jeffrey. It logs me in. Number two. I can be across the room and get ready, get my popcorn in my pop in my water or whatever and go, Hey, Cortana, turn on the Xbox. It turns on the Xbox, the TV, the receiver all at one time. Flawless. Living rooms are lighting up across to the United States. Yeah, as we Sorry about that. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there and, and then I can go Xbox, open up prime or prime video or what, or Netflix or whatever, whatever app I want to go to that's in that, that I already have downloaded and ready to go. If I want to go to TV, Xbox, go to TV. Cause that's an app that you got to go through your cable controller. Now I've just taken all of the remotes out of there and I can basically control this thing with my voice. Then I might grab the, I've got a little Xbox remote too. Then I can go through the menu system. It is so much quicker that, is a nice piece of technology. Yet, they're not doing anything with it anymore because the other part of it is pretty much, I wish they would just make a, a microphone with a camera just for doing this, but I guess that's what this is now. So Yeah, I mean, it's subway. Uh, and that, that's what I've heard pretty universally. Is that they, Connect games weren't really, they were exciting for five minutes and then they got bored, you know, and it was like, oh yeah, these, these aren't great. But the the interactive features of it. It's funny because... Microsoft's trying to do, um, you know, they've, I, what is it? Uh, I can't remember the, the manufacturer. I think it's Harden or what is it? The, where Microsoft's doing a Cortana speaker and the first one that came out with it was um, Harden Carmen. Yeah. Thanks, Paco. Involved. Hey, Paco. Hey, welcome. Paco LeBron <laughs> from Prodigy Techs has joined us with his presence. Paco, how are you doing? Better than good, better than most. Awesome, man. All right. So, all right, let's go ahead and I guess we'll move on from the the Microsoft stuff. But Paco, you want to share a personal tip or story that we could learn from? So adding on to that connect and then I'll get into my uh, story there is apparently the company that used to and I could be wrong on this piece, but I know what at least why they discontinued it was there was reported that the connect didn't work as well with all the equipment. So they discontinued it. But Apple bought the company that made the connect that microsoft was using and on all the iphone uh, 10 phones has a miniature connect for the facial recognition which when they did their launch showed that it wasn't that great and that's why when they had realized that the speaker and the microphone portion of the connect was really what went well that's why they integrated it to the box and got rid of the connect altogether is what i understood okay that's so, good. That's more than I knew. <laughs> <laughs> How I heard that, I don't remember. I think it was like bits and pieces of everywhere from Windows Weekly to like other stuff, but that's what I got. Uh, personal story or tip, uh, plan your time out better. 
So what I, <laughs> so, and basically make sure your integrations are done properly. So what ended up happening was I usually create my um, listings and stuff with uh, my Google calendar. That's my be all end all for all my scheduling. Well, I usually have repair shopper to log all my stuff and it logs it into Google calendar. Well, I ended up switching calendars and forgot to make that switch. So as I went through a couple of jobs that I knew I had, I planned something else personally to do during that time and missed it because I forgot to sync over <laughs> the other piece of the calendar. So if you are making any type of changes or anything like that, make sure you uh, go through all your uh, integrations in case they are a pivotal piece to your business. Awesome. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think we can all feel that pain point because we've all been there and done it and probably are still doing it today. All right, let's take a quick break and then we'll get into our main topic. Our show today is brought to you by Reclaim Me Pro, a specially tailored data recovery toolkit for data recovery technicians, both beginners and experts. Recovers data from multiple file systems from Windows, Linux, yes, I said Linux, and Mac, including REFS, BTRFS, VMFS, and the new Apple file system, APES. Finds lost partitions, recovers data from various RAIDs from RAID 0 to RAID 6. Yeah, if you've got that RAID array and you've got to build it, you've got to have something that can do that, and this will do it. Reads most partitioning schemes from Microsoft LDM to Linux LVM. Wide range of supported NAS models, including Drobo devices. For those that are, have Drobos out there, this can, because again, the RAID inside of some of these NASs is going to be a little bit different, and they are building algorithms in their software to be able to put this stuff back together so that you can get your data back. Uh, comprehensive technical support, including data recovery, which is your key to training and understanding partitions, file systems, and RAID recovery. Drive free for 14 days over at reclaimme-pro.com. When you decide to purchase the software, use the offer code PODNUTS for a 50% discount. All right. So our topic today is what's in your van? We're going to talk about some tools, things that we use on a regular basis, whether it be when we're out and about remotely or even in our shops on our workbenches. So this was brought to us by none other than Brad. So Brad, we're going to let you kick it off, and he has a comprehensive list that will probably deal with it a little bit, and then uh, everybody will kind of sound off on what they can add to that, and then we'll keep moving down the list. Yeah, and I, I hope that um, tonal inflection isn't a trademark that can be uh, <laughs> like sued on because of what's in your van. Um, that's a friend, Jeff. <laughs> uh, all right, so what I do. <laughs> we were we were kind of trying to come up with a topic for today, and and it's always been something like, oh, what you know, people will ask, how can I get started, or what do I need, and um, so. Uh, this kind of just came up. I'm like, all right, let's talk about this. Um, so I, I kind of have um, my my default. I don't leave the house without these things. And then I have level two, where I'm going somewhere, and I know I'm going to need some more things just in case, or I know that I'm going to specifically need a couple of these things, and so I just grab these kits. Um, and then I've got the all hands on deck kit, where it's like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Most of the time it's going to be at night and I can't go anywhere to buy these things or get these things. And so I'm going to bring everything under the sun that I can think of in case I need it. Um, so that's kind of how I look at leaving the house uh, or leaving the, the office and going on site. Um, I kind of put and I, I dumped a bunch of stuff from my brain and I was looking through all my crates and, sh and stuff and I, and I put them all into a list and I sent that to Jeff. So that's going to be in the show notes. So I don't have to go through every line item that I carry because it's like literally from batteries to different types of cables and stuff. It's, it's tedious. Um, but it would be interesting to read through. I think if you were trying to put a kit together, uh, so you can go hit the show notes for that. But um, yeah, so I started off with like, okay, me, I wear a polo, black polo shirt with my logo on it. I do wear jeans and vans every day. I wear I wear my vans. I don't wear business shoes because I like wearing vans and nobody seems to mind. And 
<laughs> that's well, fine. I mean, to be fair, you're from California, so that's pretty normal. Yeah, that's true. Um, and also, uh, you know, I know I never know if I'm going to be. I don't know if that was a dig or not, Jeff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, okay. That's right. I took it as a compliment. Well, uh, I, I will add to that, Brad, is that I normally, my go-to is either, unless I know I'm in a formal actual environment, I will wear, you know, khakis, uh, my slack, my um, dress shoe, brown shoes, t you know, polo or um, collared shirt or whatever. Most of the time for most of my businesses are, like you said, bands, canvas shoes is is usually what yeah. I wear because I usually have sneakers and I don't wear those. So I, my go-to is, all right, it's either the canvas shoes slash vans or it's going to be dress shoes for whenever I go to a client, no matter who it is. Yeah. And I mean, I'm climbing under desks. I'm going up into crawl spaces. You never know what you're getting into. So I can't dress too nicely. I've actually, when I used to wear business attire more often, like a biz casual kind of thing, um, I'd have where I was going to go to pick up a computer to move it or work on it. And they're like, Oh, let me get that for you. I don't want to get your clothes dirty. And you're like, wait, no, 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 I'm here to work. Like, I don't care. <laughs> that's not, that's not what this. So now I'm like, all right, I got the polo, which makes it official. And now I can wear jeans and, and regular shoes and I can get dirty and it's fine. And nobody cares. Um, so that's, that's kind of the start of what's in my van. Um, and then, well, hold on before you go on. Let's yeah. let me let me go ahead. So I I will third that and basically say that from my standpoint too, you can see the polo shirt that I buy that I get these and they're fairly cheap. They're embroidered, they're nice, and if they do get ripped or something like that, they're easy enough to replace. You know, you're looking at I think at the most maybe 15 20 bucks something like that. Not a big deal. And you buy 5 at a time, you get a super discount, but I do actually wear, I used to wear khakis and, you know, some modern dress shoes, not real dressy, but kind of in between some loafers and uh, no jokes. And so <laughs> is it because of your age, Jeff? <laughs> no, you probably. Yes. But the other thing I started, same thing, Brad, I started wearing jeans because you're exactly right, man. I get to an office and inevitably the computer is where? It's not on the desk. It's underneath the desk. I got to crawl under there. And then my shoes are popping off or whatever. So I basically wear tennis shoes most of the time. And they're nice. They're nice. When are your, when are your shoes popping off? Well, if I'm wearing the loafers and you're down on your hands and knees and, you know, the, you, you, you know there's nothing to tie them or hold them together so they, they could pop off or whatever. And I don't want those things. I don't want it to pull off my heel and then I got to watch how I'm standing back up and. You so got the I right wear, size on? Yeah. Okay. I wear the, I <laughs> I wear what is comfortable for doing the job that we do. Now there's a lot of people out there that go, oh, I get I gotta wear khakis. Even back in the day, I'm sure there was a lot of people that wore a nice button-down shirt inside. Now, in the wintertime, because I do live in Michigan, instead of wearing a polo like this for warmer weather, I do actually have button-down full-length shirts that I can wear also with my jeans and that makes it, uh, makes it nice too. So you've got a little bit of both, but yeah, I'm going to dress comfortable and I'm there to work like Brad said and get the job done. So I will say that I learned this tip from John Dubinsky over at the Maven group is if you're going to get a polo shirt, get it in polyester because it doesn't wrinkle. So if you're traveling and you carry extra shirts, like I usually wear cotton, uh, polos, so the damn things always get wrinkled. I got to iron them. I got to go through the whole, you know, shebang. And if I keep a spare, a couple spare of them, I forgot what trip we were on. He just pulled one out. Boom. Pulled it. Out. I was like, what? You don't iron? He's like, nah, polyester doesn't wrinkle. I was like, huh, I'll be damned. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> counter that because I have, I have two different shirts that I've ordered at two separate times. So yeah. I've got a, a couple of one, a couple of the other. One is a blend with poly polyester and yes, they don't wrinkle. Okay, but and the other one's 100% cotton, and it's uh, a little heavier knit. So, and it actually is pretty good about wrinkling. It doesn't it doesn't wrinkle too badly. But okay. the polyester ones, I hate wearing. I get ah. hot, hot as all heck in those things, and I actually like really need deodorant. I smell bad wearing them after a couple hours. Whereas the cotton ones, I I can I can run around all day in. So I don't know. I'll now, kind of 
half, half of one. I get the freak iron, like forget ironing. That right. I would, I would, I would so like uh, go through a lot of pain to not have to iron. But uh, and I'm in the know, same boat. Exactly what you said too. Like I've noticed <laughs> with the thinner of the shirt, it's just bad because I get hotter. I sweat often more, and then yeah. So yep. Yeah. So I'm I'm surprised because John being a Marine, apparently they didn't teach him how to <laughs> fold very well. Oh. Geez. And so he's not here to defend himself. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. He'll get me next week. So the, here's the thing, Paco. I can take a cotton shirt. I can teach you actually how to roll it up to put it in your luggage. And when you pull it out, it's pristine that you can just throw it on, and it's not a big deal. So, so is that something you learned at the army? Yes. Oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> he'll get me. My dad was in the army, so I'm going to be on Jeff's side on this. <laughs> Oh, all right. So let's go ahead. So let's go ahead. We got what are our essentials for our go bag? So I have a, uh, I have a mini backpack. It's kind of a over the shoulder thing and uh, it's small and it, it holds an iPad. And um, so the stuff that I like to leave, usually it's like, if I'm going, we all, we work with our minds more than anything else. I mean, we need tools to do things, but really if you're physically present and you can get an internet connection, you can probably do 90% of your job. So um, I've got some stuff that I carry with me that's like a little, um, it's a cool little case. And I'm not sure if I linked to it. Maybe I didn't. No, I'll try to find that. Um, it's a, I've, I sent it to you once before, but it's a, a neat little zipper pouch. It's kind of uh, hard sided and you open it up and it's got like a ton of cool little USB slots and it's got a, a thing for business card holder and I've got a pen in there. And um, so it's got all my little uh, like easy to boot uh, USBs where I can get pretty much any instance of Linux booted up in a second or, or it, it's like everything that I need on one USB stick, which is great. Um, and some business cards and plus people you pull it out and you open it up and it and there was like it's it's kind of like an assassin's case for a nerd and it looks cool and people are like oh that's really neat um and uh so i, I carry that um but yeah basically like business cards pen usbs for booting stuff up i, I carry water and altoids because um keep myself hydrated and and have good breath for my customers um a multi-tip screwdriver is probably the only actual physical tool that i have in there um and then, and then I, I have keys for like all of my offices. Basically, I can get in there at any time, and so I carry those around. Although most, more and more of my customers are thankfully using access systems where you just need a pin to get in, and but I appreciate them for that because I don't like carrying a bunch of keys around because I don't label them to very, very well in case they were to fall into the wrong hands, and I don't want to like say the address like, hey, this is the key to, you know, please. Please go and, and avail yourself of all their things. Um, so my keys are not well labeled intentionally, which makes it annoying. So less keys, the better, but those are in there. Um, then I got my like headphones, Bluetooth, stuff like that. That's that's it. I don't carry a lot on a daily basis unless I know I'm going to be doing stuff. Um, and then I've got the Essentials Plus. But yeah, if anyone wanted to comment on like, what's your minimum, minimum go-to if you're just doing an on-site normal customer, you know that there's not physically going to be a lot going on like do you guys carry anything more than that so i do but let me an answer something about the keys so the the way you can solve that key problem as far as labeling is you get the color-coded things that you put the you put on the keys or you could take a, if you want to be cheap you could take a marker and just mark them in different colors and then they you still know put those? It, <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> and put a <laughs> yes they do and put a uh shows my age and put a, a note in Google Keep or something like that to go, you know, blue is blah, 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 red is, you know, whatever. And then you could have the addresses to them. So you wouldn't have to memorize them, but you could pull them up in a moment's notice and go, okay, this is the key I need for where I'm going today. As far as what I carry, I carry what my kids affectionately call, it's funny you said assassin. It, it's a hard case. It's really a toolbox. You get them at Home Depot. They're literally 20 bucks, but it's a hard metal case. And it's got different slats in it that are soft. And so it's got different, you know, things you can put in there, a different tool pouch on the back of it when you open it up. But I keep my essentials in there. A couple of the main screwdrivers that I use, a uh, pair of pliers, just in case, like needle nose pliers, in case I need to grab something down wherever if I'm doing hardware and stuff. And a lot of cables. 
I've got uh, also I've got you know a way I can read drives on the fly if I need to. It's just a little cheap little plug-in I've had for probably eight years now and still works. I can plug in a 2.5 drive, a, a 3.5 inch drive in a SATA drive, all of them. And so I'll use that for if I need to do something on the fly. I, but really, I carry that stuff just in case, especially with the cables and stuff. You want to replace a USB cable or, uh, you know, even an Ethernet cable or any of the, any of those types of things. Monitor cables, you got the DVI, the HDMI, the VGA, all that kind of stuff. Um, screws, believe it or not, if you are working, especially residential, if you're working on desktops, which a lot of time, you, that's what you're going to see in residential. I carry a little container of screws. Um, I've got stuff to repair the Ethernet cables if there's a bad end or something like that. You know, just obvious stuff that you can see to kind of be able to take care of it and not have to go back to the office and then come back out. Um, just the bare essentials that in the way I probably built that kit is I had a certain amount of stuff in there. And then I got to a point where I would run into a situation and I didn't have something. And because I didn't have something, I would add that to my kit. And you do that for several years. And all of a sudden now you pretty much got everything. That's how a hoarder is born, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But it's always been in this little case. And as far as, you know, I buy the little USB sticks that have the, usually they have a hole in them. So you can put them on a, you know, one of those uh, clips and I can keep that inside of my, my portfolio with all my paperwork and stuff that I carry on the job too, with my handwritten papers where people can fill them out physically, not digitally Paco. And so I've, you know, a notepad for taking notes if I need those, I've got, uh, my square reader, all that kind of stuff for taking payments on, you know, on the fly. So that's basically my, my kit with everything in there. And I'm with you too. I keep all my tools on one USB stick, just makes it easier. I don't have to go and, and plug in this one for this one and that one for that one. And I'm still not a real big fan of easy to boot. Some people get it, they get it to work just fine. Me, I just drag and drop what I need on there and I just use it as is. So I'm a little old school that way. I'm glad you brought that up. I may have a solution for you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to sell me now? So let me paste it in the chat here. Hopefully this is the right one. So uh, on my interview with Jason Miller on Tech Life, uh, the last episode, he made me aware of this one device called an IODD. And it has the virtual booting embedded in this enclosure already. So all you really need to do is basically throw whatever hard drive. He throws SSDs in this thing. And it's basically an enclosure. You plug it in and it will either mount as a ROM or you can go ahead and boot from it. So if you throw whatever ISO is on it, you literally just have to carry this thing around, plug it in. There's a number pad on the front to select the ISO you want click it and it will boot as if it is the USB bootable USB stick. So he says that he's used this with all his texts. It's basically replaced all the USB drives outside of just, you know, some of the specific ones. Um, but this is something that I already ordered and will be trying out myself personally, but he uh, swears by it. So those who want to check it out, I just put the link in there and we'll have that over to the show notes as well for this episode. So I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. And how much did you pay for it, Paco? I think it was 70 bucks at the time. Now it's 76. That's cheap. Mm -hmm. Now there's a cheaper version than this one that doesn't have the number pad. I think it has like some hard buttons. I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that. But this is the one specifically he had talked about. Now is it, so are you, do you keep the ROMs and all that kind of stuff on, or the ISOs on that particular device? Or do you have to plug in a separate uh, no, so, hard drive? So this is just an enclosure. So okay. you would throw whatever drive in there. What I would suggest, oh. yeah. So what I would suggest is to partition the drive, like let's say 500, 500. Keep one as a, uh, as you know, your free space for all your you know, bootable tools that you would use, and then the other one you would just create folders for all your ISOs, and this thing would just discover whatever folder it is, find the ISO, select, and it'll boot. All right, I'm ordering one now. Darn it, Jason, you just made me spend more money. <laughs> yep. 
So you he gotta get that uh, and an SSD drive, but that is pretty sweet. I I could see that being. I, it's still worth it. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, I've been using. I mean, I do have a one terabyte drive that I keep all my two. Like, if you talk about offline backups, right? It you can't really put WSUS. You can, and I have. But here's the thing: when you're dragging and dropping stuff to a basically a spinning drive, or no, I'm sorry, not a spinning drive to a flash drive. That flash drive, it, it is so painfully slow to move 30 gigs of Windows updates over from your computer to that drive. Even on a spinning drive, it's like three times as fast to get that same 30 gigs to a spinning drive. Now, with an SSD in an enclosure like that, dude, that's that's genius. All right, cool. I agree. It's going to be worth the investment for the SSD, um, and it comes at a good time because my Toshiba USB drive is about, is dying after four and a half years now so i gotta get i gotta replace it so well you got two and a half more years out of it than you should have anyways yeah also that's also right. true so, <laughs> but i mean i go i mean everyone's heard the story i go through external drives like their water well when they were western digital passports once i got this one this one actually lasted me several years okay so all right so what's in your did you say what was in your essentials paco no i did not but i can say um, <laughs> what I have is kind of a combination. So recently I have this big backpack of stuff that I have in there and that's what I carry with me from time to time. I used to have an overall like laptop bag and started like stuffing stuff in there, but then it started not working as well as I would like. So I ended up flipping over to a uh, book bag. So I just got my laptop, got, uh, my fluke, uh, which is the link sprinter 300. Um, I have the, I fix it um precision kit so it's the one in that hard case where it has like tweezers uh, suction cup uh the spluger and uh no the jimmy and the spluger in there so i figured those are the most essentials that i'll need if i'm ever traveling and especially if i go to my virtual office which i get two days out of the month at that virtual office with my plan i'm there for the whole day so i need like a travel office per se so that kind of helps with that part um, I also carry my duplicator, which is the uh, Star Tech uh, dock that I have mentioned before. And I also carry a pencil case type deal that has basically all my USBs and cables and all that stuff. So that's my go to bag, at least traveling. And then in my trunk has all the other hard equipment. So I got a tackle box that literally has extra screws, memory, zip ties, Velcro, uh, USB floppy drives. Uh, external uh, DVD drives, things like that. And that just stays in the trunk along with like a, an Arachnus router and AP or something like that in case I need it. All right. So, Brad, let's go into the Essentials Plus. And you might need to unmute yourself before you start talking, but, you know. Google sp Hangouts is supposed to pop up and say, hey, you idiot, you're, you're talking, but your mic is muted. Um, you want me to say it for you? Yeah, no, you did. That's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, just like Paco, I used to have a a, a laptop like shoulder bag, and then th I just moved moved to the um, Swiss Gear blue and black. Everyone's seen a thousand. It's seen it a thousand times. It's a great little backpack. Um, and uh, yeah, I got my laptop, a keyboard, or a, a wireless mouse because I hate using trackpads. Um, and so a lot of the stuff that was in my little bag will go into that bag and just kind of has the same kind of tools you guys are talking about, some network cables, a couple of essential things like that. Um, <clears throat> usually if I've got that bag with me, I'll bring, now I've, I've broken down, I've gotten to the point where I actually have to like start bringing stuff. So once I start bringing stuff, it's like, where, do, where does the, where do the floodgates end? Um, but I'll usually have my uh, tool bag with me. And I had I, I met a tech that was carrying this thing around. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I just dumped it into the IRC. Um, it's just a little nine inch square, hard sided, open top electrician's bag. And so I carry that around. And I can easily grab pliers, wire cutters. I've got my crimpers in there, all that. Like, it's amazing how much I can fit in, in this little bag. Uh, and have it all be easily findable and, and accessible flashlight and stuff like that um so i carry that around with me everywhere i go um and then 
if it gets past then then that's that's like 90 percent. but then i've got my crates i've got every length of ethernet patch cable you can think of i've got every convertible hdmi to dvi to display port to you know ev like every combination of video cable because you'll get you get there and they've got it they bought they bought a monitor and it only has a certain kind of input and the pc's got this kind, and you just need a cable for that and you're just like yeah i got that um and i order them ahead from monoprice and i keep them all in stock because if you got to run out to uh, a local store they're like 30 bucks for some of these things and then i can get it on monoprice for six dollars so yeah. i just have them just get that done um velcro stuff and um what is this 3m stuff called this stuff's amazing occasionally you can't mount something with screws properly what is this it doesn't have like a cool name like velcro but it's a 3m uh extremely strong um it's kind of a commercial grade it's velcro with adhesive backing but it's only one it, it doesn't it's not like a fuzzy side and a, and a pokey side it's just one they're like these thick prongs and they they both stick together no matter you know, oh, anyway. I know yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah it's really great i mean the, the adhesive backing has never failed on me um and and it's really strong so like i've had to do some when you have to we've had to do some weird stuff in bars bars are always the interesting like <laughs> where you act, like where you have to mount like a big power conditioner inside of the bar like the back of the face comes off and you mount this thing in there and it's all metal and you there's no way to really like Drill screw anything it. in yeah so we use this and throw some zip ties around it or whatever and it was good to go like don't leave a problem all right so i carry that um wireless uh drill and every kind of drill bit and a bunch i mean we do a lot of weird stuff so we have a, a lot of uh so like Jeff said, like you go along, you don't have the tool for that, you run out and grab it, and then it's in your bag forever. And I literally have like 10 milk crates, and I organize everything in the milk crate either by, um, <clears throat> I found that, you know what, gallon Ziploc bags and labels tends to be like actually a pretty good way to sort everything in. <laughs> and so like one crate, I've tried to come up with better solutions that are more professional or whatever, and I haven't found anything that fits. Because the size of everything changes depending on how many of which you have and all this stuff. And it's like, you know what? Ziploc bags um, and labels. So, oh, and then uh, I, think, I feel like I'm almost rambling now. But Husky makes these little, they call them document pouches. I guess contractors can store documents in them. But it's a canvas bag with a zipper and it's, in, you know, it's, it's, it's sturdy. Um, I have a bunch of those because they're not expensive. And um, they look a lot more professional than like grocery like you go to home depot and buy some stuff at home depot and it comes in a little plat you get the little plastic home depot bag it doesn't look really pro to roll up with a bunch of those so i put everything in these little black canvas um tool document bags because they first of all they're sturdier they don't get screwed up and they're easier to kind of go in and out of but they look you know a little more pro those are those are really cool um yeah, I don't know. Cable strippers. I dumped so much stuff into the show notes, which is cool. I'm going to, uh, you guys can just kind of fish through that. But, oh, extension cords. I carry like one foot, three foot, six foot extension cords, long PC power cords so that um, if you're doing nice cable management, you can replace the little five and a half foot cable with a 10 foot one so you can actually route it nicely. Uh, man, just Cir circular saws <laughs> with vice grips and a miniature table that you have. Yeah, yeah, I have that too. <laughs> you know what's funny is I, you think about the stuff that you need and thinking about what you do, and everybody's business is going to be a little bit different. And I look at it like this if I have to bring out a drill motor and drill bits and different things like that, I've already went out and did discovery on this particular whatever project I'm doing. And it's kind of set up as a project where I don't really want to be doing that stuff on the fly. Cause man, that sounds like a big, a big to do to get into. And you're going like, wait a minute, what it, it's good to be prepared. But I think sometimes it's like, now do you leave that stuff in your car, Brad all the time? Or is it just like when you're going far away, you kind of throw the stuff, you, you grab your big crate, you throw them in the back and go from there. I'd like to say that I mean, if ideally I would just have everything in the car all the time and um, 
always have it with me. And then if I needed it, I would have, but that's not how life works, right? I don't have, I don't have a separate work van and personal vehicle. Um, and either way, it wouldn't matter because I still have life and I have kids and I have to go pick them up. And so the car gets unpacked and repacked a lot, a lot more than I'd like, which is why I have levels of, if I didn't have that problem, I would just have everything in the car all the time. And I wouldn't have like my little go bag. I would just have everything in the car. Um, I do have to repack and, and unpack the car a lot. So um, that's when I'll grab like, hey, these three crates I need the most often because it's like the, the network cables and the video cords and like extend like power. Network, power, video. Those three I'll grab like pretty much every time I go. Um, I, have a, I have one of those um, little giant, very expandable ladders. Um, things heavy, but it but it sure is a big ladder that fits in a small space when you want to drive around. So I have that, but I've, that thing's heavy. So if I, if I need it, I'll grab it. If I don't need it, I don't grab it. Okay. So, so the answer, the long winded answer is, yeah, I have to repack my car and like move stuff around a lot. So. Yeah. And, and the only reason I say that is I don't think there's a perfect solution. You just have to use what works for you. Now you live in a mildly temperate state where your weather's pretty good all the time. Yeah. You know, here in the wintertime, there's certain electronics and stuff that you're not going to want to leave in the car mm. for most of, you know. <laughs> or you're in certain cities and neighborhoods, you don't want to leave all that stuff in there. Well, that's that's true too. <laughs> so, Paco, what do you have to add to that list? What other things are essential to you or your essentials plus that you need to have when you're out and about? So that kind of so it it depends. No, kidding. Um basically what all of that is like kind of like what brad said is that same thing i have one vehicle and it's a sedan right so i have to be careful on or i have to be conscious of what i want to bring and what i don't want to bring oftentimes i will bring everything i can in that bag or in that tackle box that i can at least leave in there but if there's like a bigger project and i have to like pick up stuff and go from there it'll be determined on the project mostly all my stuff is in those two things um, I haven't run into the issue where I needed to expand from that. Now, from I like what Brad has been saying, so I probably would need to, it would be easier for me to separate that bag into these three stages so that I can get into, all right, this is what I really, really need. This is what I do. And this is for really, really big stuff. So because normally what I used to do was, and if I didn't really want to carry this big bag, I would go back to the shoulder bag and then I would just throw in laptop screwdriver kit my external hard drive notebook and the pencil uh case with all my usb uh drives and all that and i'm on my way um but anything with specific with tools and stuff like that is in the tackle box that's always in the trunk but that big bag is just compiled with everything and probably should separate them out to get into that mode of you know basic intermediate and plus that's good. And the other thing too, is a lot of times, you know, when I bring like my hard case, it sits in the car. Most of the time, I don't actually bring it in with me. It's there in case I need it to go back out to the car, but I always have my, my folder, basically my zippered folder with my documents and stuff like that. So that number one, the customer can fill it out and I've got my USB stick in there. I've got my square reader. So most of the stuff, especially if you're just doing software, you can take care of that on the fly. If I need something, I can at least go back out to the car and grab whatever it is I need uh, to pull it back in there. But it would be kind of nice, you know, I think a lot of circumstances to have everything kind of combined. And again, I don't know that there's a perfect solution for those types of things. Yeah, I'm thinking a ladder. If I got to pull a ladder out, yeah, they're hiring somebody else to do that because I'm not <laughs> pulling a ladder out for nothing. But I will tell you, the one thing that I did not think about, which is a great idea, extension cords. You never think about the situations that you run into and having an extension cord that doesn't, you know, is maybe through the mid, like maybe through the middle of the office. Hey, we can kind of snake this thing around the back and you can add that cost to your invoice when you're done. You, just, you mark it up, whatever your markup is, or you give it a cost or whatever, but you can actually do that in so you're not paying for it. And then you go replace it. And then you've got it available for somebody else. Hey, here's what we did to neaten this up. So it doesn't look like crud. <laughs> yeah. And the, and like the, um, 
the short stubby extension cords are really great for when you've got a bunch of those big power bricks on a, a power strip that don't fit. And if you're up on a ladder, I know that you wouldn't be, Jeff, but you know, I'm up on a ladder, up uh, working on something, and there's already a power strip there, and I've got to put something, like add something in, and it, it has one or two open, but the plug won't fit because it's it's too big. And I can either now get down off the ladder, go buy a new, a bigger power strip or something, or change the whole layout, or I can just go grab my little six inch power cord, plug it in, and then it kind of hangs off there, but it, it doesn't need to be super pretty because it's up in a place where you can only see it if you're on the ladder. Done deal. And those things, caught, if you go to Monoprice and search for power, like a one foot power extension cord, it's like 68 cents. Oh, or my. something. It's okay. something stupid like that. Like it's so cheap. So I keep them in inventory because it costs nothing to keep those in inventory and they, they come in handy all the time. Absolutely. Um, so, and that's another thing is everything I listed on um, uh, in the show notes and, and things that I didn't get to uh, listing. I keep all those in my um, repair shop or inventory. I have a quota of, of when to reorder them so I can automatically maintain stock of those. Um, with Repair Shopper, I think they have an app now that I, I haven't really used yet, but um, you, you can scan barcodes with it. And if it's in your inventory, it like registers it. So you can use your phone to track inventory, like pull it out, scan it, say, OK, I'm using this on this job. You you could charge for it or not. But either way, I'm keeping track of my inventory. And then once a week, I go and go, OK, what's my uh, Repair Shopper? What, are, what do I need to order? And it just you know tells me what to order based on my the rules. So that's pretty. Pretty nice. pretty handy, easy way to keep up with all this stuff, and it's. Uh, I, I think the I think the best the best thing that I can think of is is if you had a dedicated van to keep all this stuff. Now here was back in the day, here was my dream. My dream was to get a windowless cargo van, and to put a to you know put a workbench in one side, and basically have my traveling on site work truck that I could roll up. And even if I needed to repair a laptop or whatever, I could pull a laptop. I could go out in the van, turn on my tunes and, you know, pull the laptop apart or replace something or do any of that type of stuff. And then bring it back in. And it one was last, one, one last crack. And I promise this will be the last one. Is it going to be in a cassette player or a track <laughs> player in the van? Drag carpet. Uh, you don't even know what a cassette is, do you? I know um, what an eight track player is, my friend. That only played on one side and wouldn't let you for it. <laughs> All right, so I'll tell you what. This is a great conversation, and we're probably going to end it up here soon. But let's go ahead and take another quick break, and we'll get back into our main topic. Our show today is brought to you by a Fresh Books. Small business owners, it's time to be honest about how you feel when dealing with your day to day admin work. Yeah, it sucks. Admit it. You can't stand it. It's a total grind. The truth is over 5 million small business owners feel exactly the same way until they discovered FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the dead simple cloud accounting software that's transforming how small business owners handle their paperwork. Using FreshBooks, you can create invoices and send an invoice. It literally only takes about 30 seconds. There's no formula, no formatting, just perfectly crafted invoices every time. Everybody wants ease of use. Take online payments. Your clients can pay you online, which often means you end up getting paid a lot faster instead of chasing them. Project deposits. There's a super handy dandy feature and you can invoice for a payment upfront when you're doing a project. Also insights. FreshBooks can even show you whether or not a client has looked at the invoice you've emailed. Now you never have that problem when you call said client and said, hey, did you get my invoice? No, I never seen it. That's funny. You opened it up 15 times, but okay. And uh, this is only a fraction of what FreshBooks can do for you. You owe it to yourself to feel the full effect of FreshBooks on you and your small business. For a 30-day free trial, just go to freshbooks.com forward slash podnuts. Enter podnuts in the how did you hear about us section. All right, so we've got a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can carry in our kits. There's a lot, of, and, and I almost, I really like Brad's stages. 
you know, we can call it, uh, you know, DEFCON 3, DEFCON 2, DEFCON 1, something like that, or, uh, you know, whatever. And you can have these different packages that you grab and put in your vehicle. But what are some of the other things that you have ran into that you go, man, I wish I would have had that? Brad? Um, if there's a lot of, like, this is literally, like I was saying, this is how a hoarder is born. This, this happened over the years. Um, the different, uh, like torques adapters, all the different bits you run, you're like doing something and maybe a security camera has the Torx bit with the little pin in the middle to keep it so that you have the to Torx go get this. Bit, yeah. 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 Like you just, you're like, really? And then you got to run to the hardware store and thankfully it was during business hours so I could buy the thing. And then, and then you're like, if I could just run to Home Depot and buy this, how secure is it, right? Because if I was a criminal and I knew this was something I was going to come into, I could just go buy it. So how, like, why, what is even the point? But anyway, um, uh, carrying, I, it's another thing that you got to carry a big box of, of Cat 5 or Cat 6 cable and uh, all the little connectors that go along with that. So I have that. Um, <laughs> like, uh, different saws and circular circular bits, um, circu circular saws for uh, the power drill. Those come up a lot. People, honestly, you'd think that this would be the kind of thing that would be scheduled, but it's come up all, like so often that I carry it now. I have a two-inch desk grommet for so that you can drill a hole in a desk to run cables through it, and you've got the the cosmetic grommet to 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 run the cables through. I keep I carry everything to do that on the fly. Um, floor cable guards, um, power strips that can be mounted under a desk and like, it's, it's, it's insane. And I, I don't even know, like, you just have to be in the business for long enough and run into enough situations. And like, I literally had to get a bigger car because it saves me time and I make more money if I have all this kind of stuff handy. So when someone's like, Hey, could you just, you know, and they end if somebody says, hey, can you just get ready for what's going to happen next? Because it's not just. It's like, okay, when you start with a sentence like that, it means, hey, can you just have a $1,000 worth of stuff handy just in case you need it <laughs> in right. an hour? You know, um, I have, I do care. I, I wasn't kidding about the circular saw. I have a, a really cool work table that folds up into, um, uh, it's, it's about four, three to four inches thick. And it's like a, a four by three table with a handle on the side. It's like, it literally opens up like an old school, old timey magicians thing. Like you click the thing and the legs drop down out of it and then it folds back up. I carry that and it has clamps in it. That's, you can pop those out and clamp. That's what you use to cut that uh, extension cord or that uh, search protector one time, right? Yeah, you saw. Yeah, okay, exactly. Yeah. I had that uh, clamp it down. I've got an angle grinder and a circular saw and a, a reciprocate. Recipro how do you say that? Reticulating saw? Yeah. I've got all that stuff in my saw? car. Yeah. Is it reciprocal? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I just have all this stuff because, and it um, it's all now neatly packed up into crates and, and tool bags and stuff. So I can just kind of all have it sitting there, throw everything in and in Tetris style, get it into the car. Um, it gets a little crazy, but at some point, every single thing that I carry has come in handy and saved my butt, which is why it's there. That's good. Paco, what about you? What are some of the things that you've gone on to a job and you've said, oh, I wish I would have had one of those? So I'm going to take a slight spin on your question for those that run into that scenario, but don't have it and can't get it because they don't have the finances at that moment. So what I've done over the years, being a part time tech and just, you know, in crunch times is I use uh, PayPal business and PayPal here for my processing. So the good thing about PayPal here and PayPal processing, it has a, um, a square reader similar to square. And for those that have a let's say they have they don't have PayPal business, they have a PayPal personal account and they have the well, I guess you would need the. Anyway, regardless of the fact, but if you have the reader, you charge whatever it is. Let's say you need X. Hey, Mr. Customer, I need this cable. The cable's not there. I can run to get it right now. It's X plus whatever 5% is to cover the processing fee. 
They say, okay, great. We'll go ahead and run it. Go ahead and go and get it. So what you can do is you can charge it right then and there for that item. The amount goes into the PayPal account ready for you to spend. And then what you can do is two things. One, you can either use a PayPal debit card if you have one to go to the place, buy it, come back, get it installed, then get paid. So now you don't have to return for another visit or have them pay an invoice, say you're going to order it and then, you know, do that whole uh, song and dance because you're trying to hide the fact that you don't have funds to cover that cost. Or you can, if you don't have a PayPal debit card, they have a feature now that allows you to transfer the amount into your bank's debit card for 25 cents. So now it'll go directly into it instantly within 30 minutes, grab the amount, go get the part, come back and go from there. That's what I would have done um, or I have done with the PayPal business debit card before. So when you run into those type of things of cable, something you need, or maybe even a tool, um, these are going to be ideas for you to try and run into because this may save you some time versus having to you know do some type of song and dance and come on to another visit which you can't get paid for because you didn't have it in the first place that's good that's an awesome tip yeah because paypal does do very quick uh they're probably the fastest with transfers from them to your bank and uh and using the paypal debit card is is literally instantaneous um i i haven't used that before but i might do that just for those kind of scenarios get that set up that's a pretty cool idea so the only reason why I switched to them recently, because I was with uh, another uh, payment processing and went back, was I was doing enough volume per month that it now dropped me to their second tier, which is a lot lower than a lot of the other ones versus their 2.9% versus 30 cents. And if you swipe the card on their reader, it's 2.75%, which I believe is the same as Square, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, But you get your money up front. And then, like you said, they have the deposit where it'll go next day or the new feature now where for 25 cents, it'll load into the debit card that you have on there for the bank account and it'll be there in 30 minutes. Nice. Yeah. And the other thing too, to think about is we're talking about a lot of different tools and there's a lot of different people in a lot of different situations, as Paco has said. And you want to remember that literally you can, now some people are going to get mad at me because this literally brings up the man in the van again. You can literally get started in this business with a notepad, a couple of screwdrivers, a USB flash drive, and you're perfectly fine. And then here's, here's what I've always done from the beginning is whenever I needed a specialized tool to do something, what I would do is if I was on that job, I would pay for that tool. And maybe I wouldn't really make anything off of that job because the job itself paid for the tool. But the next time I did a job that needed that tool, I had it. And so I just added to my stuff over time. So I wasn't spending a whole lot of money up front. Now, a lot of people go take out a business loan, you know, get a line of credit, whatever. No, you don't have to do that. You can if you want. Don't I do personally it. don't think it's a smart idea. I don't think it's it. dumb, but there's people out there that do it. That's just my opinion. And Paco's apparently. No. Yeah, me too. It. I agree. Yeah, We've read. So collected you, things as you go. Exactly. That's the easiest way to do it. And then there's you've you've got no I don't want to say you don't have skin in the game, but you've got no, you've got no issues. If something does come up, let's say you have to stop doing this business. Let's say you are doing a part-time and you got to do something else. Then you, you still have to pay that money back. So here's a good rule of thumb. If you can't buy five of them, you can't afford one of them until you get to that position. Then that's when you can take a loan from the mouth of babes. And <laughs> thank you. No, that's good. That's real good. All right. So is there anything that I'm looking, I'm still looking at the list. Is there anything we have not covered as far as, oh, you know, nobody has mentioned keyboards and mice. What's up with that? Nobody cares extra keyboards and mice, uh, maybe a PS2 with Sorry. the USB. I, okay. So I have an old PS2 keyboard that I have on a shelf in my garage that sits there in case that happens one day. Um, and every time I look at it, I go, should I just toss that? But no, I'm a hoarder, so I keep it there. But uh, no, I do I do carry a USB keyboard and mouse in, in one of my crates in case. Because I actually need it a lot for, um, I guess, to be okay for troubleshooting. But I do a lot of restaurants. So oh, um, yeah, the screens and stuff. Yeah, the point of sale systems have, you could plug in and get a keyboard. And then you can get to like Windows and do stuff. But um, so I have that. Yes, it's just not on the. 
You want me to make the list longer, Jeff? All right, let's make the list longer. <laughs> yeah, and I use the PS2 to USB adapters that's in that tackle box as well in case I run into those type of issues. Well, here's the thing. Here's a prime example. In, in I know you're, you're I, I can probably say that I probably use mine at least a couple times a year. Prime example, USB ports go out. Now everybody's panicking. Oh, what do I do? Windows 10 software is messed up. Here's the thing. On most desktops, now that now it's not going to help you with a laptop, unfortunately, but with most desktops, you have, there's still PS2 ports on there. Usually they're a combination. It's a PS2 for both the mouse and keyboard. You can use either or. If you had it, if you shut the computer down, you had a PS2 keyboard, you could plug that in or a mouse or whatever, and that gets you past your problem of USB. Because I ran into that problem where, where a system, and I run into it periodically, where a system is so messed up that for some reason, the USB devices don't want to work, mainly the keyboard and mouse. Especially if you're trying to get into an F8 menu or something like that, you plug in that PS2, I guarantee it works 99.9% .9 of the time. Just works. It's it's old school technology that still works. So. Now, I don't carry one of those around with me, but I have one sitting on a shelf right over here in case I need to pull it out and use it at some point. And again, I'm a little bit different. I I don't like to do stuff outside of my house. I'm a hermit and I live in my office, a little hundred square foot, 10 by 10 office. So this is where I like to be. This is where I like to work. I don't really like people hovering over me. So I try not to go on site if I don't have to, but there's quite a few times where it's, it's hard to avoid. The real rub is, is um, having being someone that works in an office and then also goes on on site you don't want to have we i mean I, I can't afford to duplicate plus the space required would be insane to duplicate all the tools across the board so then it's like everything has to be mobile and packable and go but it also has to be available available to me in the office when i'm doing something and and i don't really have like a great solution for that except for the fact that i can have everything kind of creatable and bring it in when I need it. But that's, that's actually kind of a pain is, is having to have all that stuff. Like, what do you take? You take everything with you so that, cause you, you're just as likely, if not more likely going to need it when you're out. So it's all got to be packed and created and ready to roll. And then you got to bring it in when you need it. And then, um, yeah, I didn't even think about it because I live in Southern California, like the weather situation. If I have to run out to my car, it's right there. It's probably if it's cold, it's sixty degrees. It'll still be <laughs> that's not an issue. <sighs> yeah, so, so I've had to duplicate some of the essentials. So I'll have you know screwdrivers, kits. Uh, I have a dock and monitor set. If I plan to get uh, the office uh, full time, if I do, I'm going to move all the machines, all the duplicating stuff or whatever. But I'll have like a simple dock here and all that jazz. So I have had to duplicate some of the stuff, but not like you said, for like some of the bigger things, like if I had to take two of those, one, the space, I don't know where I would keep it. Um, and then two, just the finances to duplicate all the, especially the big hardcore stuff that I need. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I do, yeah, I have I have like a screwdriver, a couple of screwdrivers, a couple of pliers, wire cutters, like a couple of basic things on a little tray, but uh, for the most part, yeah, it's just bring the tool bag inside. <laughs> Well, and here's the thing too. You you look at things like I bought the original iFixit screwdriver kit. Now that's not what I started off with. I started with a a inexpensive twenty dollar kit that actually is still my favorite set of screwdrivers with all the small screwdrivers for laptops and whatnot. But when I did buy my first iFixit kit, it, it it works pretty good. I didn't really like the handle as much as the ones that I bought for twenty dollars years ago, and so I still tended to use those. But when I got the new iFixit kit with all the, like Paco was talking about the spudger and all that kind of stuff in there, I really, that, that's it. That kit sits in here, but then I took the old kit and that went in my go case. So now I've got all those same bits and everything that I can use when I'm on the fly. So I'm not having to grab one and leave it and all that kind of stuff. So it makes it a lot easier for me. That's one of the things that I, but again, I did that over time. You're making money in your business. You can afford to spend money on some of the tools that make your life. Is it necessary? No. Is it more convenient? Yes. In some kind, sometimes convenience 
trumps necessary. In other words, if you can afford it and do it, go ahead and grab those tools. You'll have them for a very long time and it'll be worth the investment. And then you won't have to drag as much stuff back and forth. We got anything else we want to add to this list? Well, we didn't really get into software, which we had mentioned, but uh, I think that would that would lead us down an entire new rabbit trail that we may not need to go into today. We can probably do that another time. I don't yeah, know what let's, you think. Do, let's do that. Let's do, uh, we will talk about the software that we use at another time and we'll make this uh, you know, two-parter. I don't know what's in your van part two. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let me take a quick break. And I do have one email that I want to get to. And the reason is because it was addressed to Brad and Brad's on the show. And then we'll kind of go from there. If you would like to support what we're doing here, and I really appreciate those that are doing that, you can go to patreon.com forward slash computer repair podcast. Here are our newest Patreon supporters. Michael Cooley, who is better known as Taz. He's in the chat room over here. He's in the chat room um, at the Mike Smith show. You can find him all over the place. He's on Facebook. He's a fun guy. Now, Taz is spelled capital T, capital A, capital Z. Do not put any lowercase letters in there because he gets you mad. He gets real mad when you do. See, I, so just warning you up front. Um, but no, we appreciate uh, we appreciate what uh, Taz has done for the community, helping out with uh, for for a long time, doing the call screening and whatnot, and just being a great supporter of the tech communities out there. Uh, we have Jose Gomez. We have a Mark Thomas. We have Ann Napoleo. And I probably butchered that. And I apologize, Ann. So um, I actually just asked her real quick on Facebook how to say her name. It's Napoliello. Okay, Napoliello. If I'm reading there we go. Correctly. Thank you. There we go. You're Thank you for that. Uh, Jeremy Like, uh, Larry Brinker, Andrew Piercy. I want to. Uh, I just want to thank each and every one of you for supporting the show. And these people all also came into the Facebook group, which is growing, and it's nice to see. Here's okay. I, I promised I wasn't gonna do this, but I just I just lost my stuff right now. Um so don't do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyways. So we were talking about a couple things that sometimes when people will tell you about certain things in a Facebook group over somewhere in maybe another Facebook group, and they get ridiculed for the questions they ask, they get ridiculed for the things that they say or do and it's not really funny it's it's just not you know we everybody likes to have fun and that's and that's fine but when somebody's just sharing a piece of information they're just sharing it because it's something that they noticed and i find that stuff fascinating because i can't follow all the stuff that's on the internet i just don't so here's my word of advice this is during my own commercial. Here's my word of advice to those people out there in the Facebook groups. Stop being a jerk. If you don't have anything good to say, just shut up. Pure and simple. Don't say anything. And here's the other thing that I hate. Okay. When somebody asks a question, don't come back and go off into a rabbit trail that has nothing to do with the question they asked. If you don't have anything smart to say, it's better to sit there and look stupid then to open your mouth or type on a keyboard and remove all doubt. Stop doing it. You have a filter. Every one of us does. I don't use mine a whole lot, but I, I do sometimes. Use that filter. Just walk away from the keyboard. Go get a drink of water. Do something different, but stop being a jerk. We don't need, we, we, there's plenty of jerks in, the, in this whole world. We don't need an extra jerk on a Facebook group that doesn't know how to hold his tongue or doesn't know how to actually talk to people like human beings. So I don't know if these are aliens from another planet, but just stop, stop being a jerk anyways. So I think the biggest piece of what Jeff is trying to say here is the reason why this group is so great and all the supporters who are on this uh, group get access to the Facebook group is this is a safe place. This is a place where there is no dumb question. 
I think there's been a lot of value in the group where I think now a lot of people who weren't really sure if that what we meant by that really meant what it was. And there are people who are asking questions that some of us don't know or probably wanted to ask and it felt like we shouldn't because we would look dumb or inexperienced or why are we in this industry? And those that are experienced are providing those answers. So no bums in our group. So we want to make sure that it's a safe environment. If you want to contribute, it's not that much to contribute. You get access to a lot of great features and a lot of great experience and a lot of great uh, information in that particular group. Thank well, and, you, Paco, and, for wrapping that up. Brad? Yeah. And re like, if somebody asks a question that you haven't thought about for a long time, because it is kind of, uh, you know, it was like a, a, a thing that you dealt with early on and it seems kind of basic, to go back and reevaluate that to answer the question is actually kind of a nice exercise. So if it's something that you think you should have already known because it's basic, whatever, actually, I like answering those questions. Yep. You know what? The Here's the thing. And here's, here's where a lot of people have it messed up. The teacher actually learns the most. So the person giving that information actually learns the most from that interaction. The problem is most people just can't get out of their way or shut up enough to actually be able to give good information to help others out and know that they would be, they would learn from that information. So again, I don't, you know, I don't want to do this, but you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I do sincerely want to, I, I appreciate each and every person that's given it. This has been awesome. And when things like my mixer blows up, not literally, but doesn't work anymore, I'm able to take funds and use funds to buy a new mixer and pay for the services that we use on a, on a regular basis. So I do appreciate every Patreon supporter that we have for your continued support. And I'm sorry I put that in the middle there, but it's just one of those things that irritates me about Facebook groups. And it, it is, like Paco said, it's it's a buck a show. And I know not everybody can afford that, but um, if if you can, it's it's literally, it'll be no more than $4 a month if you give a buck a show. And that'll get you in the secret Facebook group where you can share with like-minded individuals that actually want to help and don't just want to sound like the dumbest person in the world. All right. Uh, enough with that. <laughs> I promised somebody that I was going to do in a, in a, and I might bring this segment up uh, at a later date, but I was going to do something. Jeff unplugged is going to be a segment in our show moving forward. So, <laughs> Oh God, no, <laughs> that's enough for the five minutes, let alone a segment. Oh man. All right. Let's go ahead. And we've got one email I want to get to because this was sent to Brad and, and myself and uh, Brad had something to say about it. So uh, this email comes from a Randy and it says, hi, Brad and Jeff. On your recent episode, I heard Brad was having a hard time with AV systems. And I work for a school, and I also hate the camera and video recording systems. They are all evil. I found what works for us is using a Synology NAS with Synology Surveillance Station. I know it's on the little expensive side with the licensed hard drive and the device. We have 70 plus camera hike vision POE camera att cameras attached to RES 3614XS. I'm assuming that's the Synology number. Uh, only thing is that the client side, the more camera that is being viewed, the more memory is needed on the system. We have about 16 cameras with 8 gigs of RAM. Actually, that's not too bad. Uh, the DS Cam app for Android and iOS works pretty well. Hope this helps. Randy. Thank you, Randy, for that. And Brad, you said you have worked with some of the surveillance systems through uh, one of the other NASAs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So we just kind of have adopted QNAP as our favorite, but I do have some Synologies that I like as well that in a couple of offices. Um, and I've used QNAP's surveillance station. It's kind of the same same idea. And it is better. Um, they're pretty good. So I, and, I, and Synology, QNAP's kind of like, hey, we're going to race the, to the finish. They're always moving ahead real fast. And Synology's kind of like, we're, we're going to be stable and, and just work really well and still do cool things, but maybe QNAP seems to kind of, their R&D seems to move a little faster, sometimes at the expense of stability. Kind of, which one do you like the most? Um, I like Synology and QNAP equally for various things. Um, so I bet you that their, their surveillance app is 
pretty great. Um, and actually, I'm thinking about there's a lot of stuff that goes into the situation that I've been dealing with as far as like uh, they were using their the the native camera cloud linking system like instead of opening ports on the router um, which I'd have to change if I wanted to go to a different platform and yeah, but it's a great suggestion um, I think the the mobile apps and those do work really well so I appreciated it from hearing that from Randy. I think he put that in the, he might've put that in the Facebook group because I remember seeing that before. Okay. I th Well, I think the email was sent to both you and I, I think. Or maybe, yeah, I might've read it off of you. I don't know. I remember seeing him say that before. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it somewhere. Uh, Paco, have you done any surveillance systems at all? Nope. Okay. N not interested either? Nope. I'm outsourcing that. I'm good. Okay. That's yeah, don't, probably don't smart. Do <laughs> I don't run cable and I don't do uh, AV security. Nope. I outsource that. Yeah, not everybody has to be a Superman like Brad and just do everything. Climbing on ladders, underneath I don't desks, do tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> People, I out try to outsource it, and then they come to me because they can't figure it out. I, I feel your pain. Believe me, I do. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I do have one more email because uh, this is it, this might be timely, so I wanted to bring this up to. This is from a Brian a Wheeler. And uh, says, uh, Jeff, I've been enjoying the shows. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Brian. Can you mention the GovX.com website on the show? I was in the Air Force. I guess that counts. Yes, it does. Thank you for your service. Uh, I know you and John are ex-military. These There are probably many veterans and government employees that listen to the show. I use this site to purchase movie and sports tickets at a discount. They have some cool gear in there for weekend warriors. But for me, it's mostly tickets. Just be selective as some of their partners discount more than others. P.S. Doesn't cost anything to join. Hoorah. Brian in, it looks like uh, New Hampshire, live or free die state. And so thank you, Brian, for that information. So it's govx.com. Now, I have not checked this out, so, um, but it sounds like it's a legitimate thing that uh, you can definitely check out. It sounds like you can get discounted tickets, which is pretty cool, especially for veterans. All right. I'll tell you what, uh, Paco, why don't you give us one parting thought and let people know where they can find you at? Outsource what you can. <laughs> but when I say outsourcing, you want to go ahead and make sure that you are still in the motion of things. So perfect example, I have a cabling project that I was approached. I have a subcontractor or another IT company that does that. Um, make sure you have your ins and outs and figure out how you can stay involved because you did get the job. You are coordinating. You should get paid for your time. So don't give that as a pass off, but make sure that the bill is coming from that other company or that it's paid for that other company because you don't want to run the taxes through your company to pay for their income that goes to them. Um, everyone can find me either on Twitter. I'm usually active on there with the handle C-H-I-T-E-K-C-E-O. Or you can find me over on Tech Life, formerly known as Podnuts Daily. Awesome. And Brad, give us one parting thought and let people know where they can find you at. Yeah, I didn't come up with a great uh, parting thought ahead of time. So, and I've, I've dumped a lot of brain, a lot out of my brain this time. So I'm, I think I'm just going to say thanks, everybody, for listening. Podnuts is a great resource. Uh, contribute. Facebook group is great. Awesome. Have a, have a good weekend. <laughs> and where can people find you? They can find me at ttcscomputerservices.com or um, brad at ttcscomputerservices.com. And just so people know, when John is not here doing the show notes, because John puts together a phenomenal set of show notes when he's here uh, doing the show, and he, he'll be back next week. He's on vacation, which he should be taking a vacation and hanging out with the family, so that's cool. But Brad... It's really stepping up, man. He he comes up with a topic and he puts together a plethora of information to give to you guys. So he, here's the thing. If John or Brad was not doing the show notes, there would be none. I just put it to you that way. So I am very, very thankful for both of these gentlemen for stepping up and doing what I would never do myself. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. I try. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's always good. So, hey, people love their show notes, and they love to find links to things that we talked about. 
so they can go back and reference. And I think it's great for that. So, All right, come join us live for the Computer Repair Podcast every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern over at podnets.com forward slash CRP live. Yes, I did shorten that URL. Uh, join in on the conversation by hanging out in the chat room. You can send an email to podnuts at podnuts.com. We will read it on the air, or you can call us at or leave a voicemail at 734-335-1000. I want to thank everyone for listening and subscribing to the show. We'll see you next time on the Computer Repair Podcast.